And I'm going to read a little bit more from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Because Apostle Paul is bringing to Timothy's remembrance some of the persecutions that he suffered. That's why he tells them, hey, endure hardness. In verse number 8, the Bible reads, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. He's saying, you know, just because of the gospel of Christ, because he's preaching Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, this is enough for him to suffer persecution. This is enough for him even to be thrown into prison. There is great power in the gospel. It's a power of God unto salvation. And this is why, you know, the enemy... The children of the devil and the devil himself don't want that being preached, which is why he's willing to go at any length to make sure that the word of God is going to stop, that the gospel is going to stop being preached. And, you know, you may not have picked this battle. You may not have, you know, signed up and said, yeah, I want to fight. But you know what? By getting saved and, and becoming a child of God, you are in the fight. Whether, whether you like it or not, you're, you're there. And now we've got to deal with where we're at, okay? And you want to, you know, if, if you love God, if you love the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for your sin, to save your soul, and you love other people and you want to see them get saved, you know, it's time to step up and become a soldier for Christ. It's time to get in the battle. It's time to get in the fight. Like I said, and there's no getting around it anyways. You're already in this. There's already a spiritual warfare going on. You didn't start it. Okay, you're not going to end it. But here we are nonetheless. There is a war going on. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the Bible describes very clearly, you know, when we're talking about warfare, we're not talking about grenade launchers and, you know, guns and ammo and, and, and knives and, and physical fighting, because those aren't the weapons of our warfare. It's not, it's not about, okay, now you're signed up here, you get your battle gear and, and go off and, and shoot somebody. It's not like that at all, not even close. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3 says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Carnal means fleshly, just physical of this world. That is not the weapons of our warfare. It says, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Our battle, our weapons are going to be those of words and thoughts and ideas that come straight from the word of God. This is the fight that we're in. We're trying to reach the hearts and souls and minds of people. That's the, that is where the true power is, by the way. Anyways, it's not, it doesn't come through the barrel of a gun. That's not where true power comes from. True power is going to come through the word of God. 